everyone and welcome back to my channel now I got a new printer my son bought me a new printer for my birthday and it can fit some beautiful thick watercolor in it and I'm so excited so I've not tested it out yet I've not tested the ink out so this might run for all I know I have no idea but what I did with the printer I just made the illustration a little bit smaller than a full A4 size piece of paper um, I'm just going to go through a couple of bits of what I'm using. I've not actually decided what paint But this is the first time that I've, I've actually done this and attempted it on proper watercolour paper So it's, it's going to be interesting I've got a low tack tape, uh, masking tape and then a normal masking tape here So I'm thinking about putting the low tack one around the edges And then this one over the top just for extra security The paper that I'm using actually one draw the bruh, one draw again, one draw again. I've got a new cabinet at the side of it and I'm still trying to remember and learn which drawers are which. Uh, so this is the paper that I'm using and it is the Dale O'Reilly one. Now I don't want to use my Archer's one, Archer's? My really expensive one as a tester because I don't know what it's going to be like. Now it has printed off, there's a couple of lines now. I do need to have a little bit of a mess with the printer. It's the first time that I've used it, so I'm giving it a break. Giving it a break. But I have found on YouTube, I've got a random fly in the room, just lovely, that Christine Karen does have a YouTube channel. She does have a YouTube channel. So, last night, while I was in bed, I watched a couple of her videos. They're not tutorials, they're time-lapse. And you know what I didn't half enjoy just sitting there and watching somebody else do watercolour with these illustrations that I love she does such a beautiful job uh, so basically that's what inspired me that's what inspired me got two jugs of clean water this is just a really thick board and what I usually do is I'm not that prepared but I just get these and I pop them underneath just to give it a little bit of a tilt when I'm using watercolour just so it doesn't puddle up and it can run to the bottom and I can clean it up like that it just makes my life a little bit easier now I'm going to try and not copper but I'm taking inspiration with what Christine Karen was doing let's see if I can get this as close to the bottom as possible uh, it needs to go over a little bit so she uses the wet on wet technique to start off with. She does like the base uh, the base painting all in that same technique. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do. So this is where I have to be a little bit patient. So I'm going to have to do the base layer and then leave it to completely dry. It's a good job I'm using that other tape because that is... Can you see it's coming up already? Right, I am... I have got a package due. Not for me. A new phone for my husband and my son is due so if you hear a bang and then the dog bark I will try my best to edit it out but you know that's what it is I've had to stop in all day but to be fair it's been raining all day so I don't mind and I've done everything that I need to do so I thought I'm gonna try this painting because I was really excited about it last night just lying in bed at like half past and I thought I can't I can't seriously can't go in my room now and start painting so I thought I'll do it now so that should give me a nice border. Now it is peeling up, so that's why it's a good job. I did pull another one out. Now I don't know how much of this I've actually got left. I have got a different kind to try. Let's see if that'll do the trick. Otherwise I'll have to find the different one. Now I don't want this to actually touch the paper because this one is unbelievably sticky and I know for a fact that it'll rip the paper. So that's why I thought, put that one down first, just to protect it, and then go over the top. I think I'm going to, but it's the first time that I'm using this paper, I'll use my really nice watercolours. I'll use my Rembrandt watercolours for this one. Now I have already coloured this illustration on Tantone paper. There is a tutorial up on my channel actually colouring this page, uh, doing the flowers, purple flowers. So instead, I'm going to try a different colour scheme this time. I 
the reason that I said that I'm going to have to be patient is if I use the heat gun, it's going to peel the masking tape up. So if I just work on this for however, however long it takes to do that base layer and then just leave it and forget about it, go off and do another thing and then come back to it later on. Hopefully not too much later on. So that should do the trick. So I need my cloth. I got a new set of Alex drawers um, and they're absolutely perfect for, for holding paints and watercolours, absolutely perfect. My husband kindly bought it for me last weekend and uh, built it for me. I'm really pleased with that. Getting my presents a week early. <laughs> So these are the paints that I'm going to use, really, really, really messy palette, but if it's not messy, then you're not using it. really love the paints, these, that needs to go on that side. So, where shall I begin? Where shall I begin? Um, it's making me a bit nervous this now, because I don't know what the, the ink's going to behave like, is it? Is it going to run? Is it not? So I've got my biggest brush here just to get a layer down of water. And what I tend to do as well while I'm waiting pre wet these. I'm just going to wet that, all of them. I'm not 100% sure what colours I'm using. That was perfect timing. The phone rang and the phone's turned up. Brilliant. So I can film now in peace. <laughs> so right, they're all pre-wet. Pull my sleeves up. Let's get this page wet. Hold your breath. And what I'm gonna do in a minute as well is move up the paper, move it up to the light just so I can double check that I haven't missed any areas because you don't want that I am so 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 pleased that I've got that new printer now I don't know how long I was complaining about that other one for but now I can print on watercolour paper, yay! it doesn't seem to be running it doesn't seem to be running yes <laughs> right so that should be wet enough Let's go over it one more time I'm not adding any more water I'm just making sure that it's spreading out evenly and my brushes of choice I do like my Princeton Neptune ones but I do like the Billy Showell ones as well so I'll start off with this because, like I said, I'm not copying um, Christine Karen's painting. I sort of want to take inspiration. Now I'm using some of this paint as well that's already um, already mixed on the palette because I don't want to waste it. They're expensive, these paints. But I do want it really, really watered down. So I'll bring you in ever so close. So I'll move the light first, put the light there. And bring the camera down and that should do the trick it's a really really gloomy day really gloomy day but I want this paint to be really watered down I don't want it to be dark at all so. I want it even lighter than that I might actually make it like turquoises and pinks And with the paper already being wet, it'll just sort of do its own thing and move where it wants to. So adding a little bit more water there. So 
because it seems to be drying up already at the bottom so I'll clean my brush off pre-wet this again just a little bit more now what I'm going to do next I'm going to complain about in the next video because I'm going to do some splatters and it's going to go all over here I know it is and then I'll, I'll say in a future video why did I choose to use white why did I get a white uh, desk protector I don't know <laughs> that's the answer thought it was a good idea and here I'm going to get my little pink cloth here colours mixed together too much it's going to turn into a purple and I don't want purple because the last one looked like a kind of purpley shade so we've got a little bit of a puddle forming now at the bottom so if I just run my watercolour brush and then tap it on the cloth it'll pick up any excess Let's add a little bit more pink. Let's do the same again. Why not? Actually, I want a little bit of pink as well on the face. That brush does not like this cloth. This is a Paul Reuben microfiber cloth. The, br the bristles do not like it one bit, so I'm going to have to switch. I've never had that happen before. So a little bit of that pink on her face, but I'm just going to make sure that it's definitely wet enough. I think a little bit on the shoulder as well. So you see how it's travelling down because I've got it tilted so it won't puddle together and you can easily lift the colour up when you've, you've popped it down somewhere that you don't want you can easily lift it up so I want a little bit of turquoise as well And she does use polychromos pencils over the top I'm not I don't tend to use pencils over the top of um, watercolour paper all that often so I'm definitely a new bit I'm going to blend this out so if she uses polychromos then I'm going to use polychromos as well there's the plates here I'm just going to blend these areas out ever so much and I want to blend out as well this Maybe you have to put a couple of layers of water down. I don't know. But you can see that tape there is lifting. So that tape is really, really good for colouring books, but for watercolour paper, not so much. So add a little bit more of this. And some that pink. I don't want these lines so let's try and get rid of them before it completely dries Her watercolour does dry as well, a little bit lighter than what you see in Nige. I 
tiny bit more pink. It's turning to purple, which I don't want, but it will be lighter. Just keep telling myself that it'll be lighter. Use a lighter pink. Lift some of that up now. So just before I'm finished doing this very first layer, I'm just going to put just a couple of splatters of clean water because it does give quite a cool effect and I'm probably going to have to leave this to dry for half an hour at least, maybe a little bit more. And then I can go over with the second layer. That should be okay now. I have a, a problem with, with faffing too much. So I'm going to leave that now and then be right back. Oh, just noticed. Let's soak that up. Right, now I'll be right back. So I'd say now that's probably 90% dry. There's a bit there that's missing and I don't know why. No idea. But I do want to switch over brushes. I think I'll use, which is the bigger one, this one. This is a size 4. I'll paint some of these flowers in. No, I think I'll stick with this turquoise colour that we've used just to try and keep it minimal colour palette. This brush might be a little bit too big, let me just see. Yeah, it's a little on the big side that one, so I'll switch to number two. And before these dry, I want to add a little bit dark, little bit of darkness to the very centre. I want to bring you down even more. I think there we go. I know that the glow, the glow is everything. Let me try and turn the light off. We'll stick with natural light for a while. It has uh, gone a little bit brighter. Not much, mind you, but still. Get some of this darker shade. See what that does. I'm going to switch between brushes actually because I want to keep the dark paint on here and I don't want to waste it basically. So I'll do the same thing with all the rest of them. Not too sure what to do with the skin yet. Still got a really annoying fly in the room, so if you hear buzzing, that's what it is. already started drying that now. 
Hold up, man, but it's not a warm day today. So I don't understand why it's drying so quick. Maybe I'll do two petals at a time here. I love that that one looks, it's beautiful. I think I'll get away with doing the three here. Some of this probably will move round once I've done the back um, areas. Now I know next time I need to do the background and then work on the the area that's got the most area in. Like I should have probably done the hair, then the skin, or the skin, then the hair, then then the flowers. But I'm still learning. Still learning. I have to find a different illustration that I've not coloured before. So it just blends out beautifully. a little bit more of that now I think that's all the flowers it's just the bits in her her which do I want them matching these probably Move it down it over slightly. I 
darker colour. Need even more. All up again. Here's where it's just going to get a little trickier. It goes onto the skin. Be a little bit more careful. Luckily, because I've already put that pinky purple colour down, it doesn't look too bad. to do these little bits as well probably with the darker shade I think actually put a tiny bit around the tops Tiny bit on the eyebrows now as well. I know I'm going over this skin, but I suppose it, it won't just make my life a little bit easier, I suppose, later on. Even though I've no idea what colour I'm doing the hair yet, I want to give her some eyebrows. I'll do for now. I need to do them this little areas down to the top. Let's clean that off. Get a little bit more paint on. It's definitely a good job that I put the second layer of masking tape on. Cool them like that for now. I don't want to bring it down because I'm not sure that's what I want to do. I might go over with a black pencil. Or a marker maybe. Another one there and I think there's one on this side as well. And there's one down there. I 
I'm going to leave that to completely dry again and then decide what I'm doing with the hair and the skin the, um, the leaves at the bottom I think I want them in pink the leaves I know it looks really muted now really muted so maybe I could have gone over the top of the background with another layer but I'm still just just playing with the fact that I can print now on this sort of paper and I need to get used to it of all the different techniques that I can now do I don't know what what went on there but I'll give this about 10 minutes I think 10 minutes and then we'll do the hair and the skin I've had to turn the big light on unfortunately it's just <laughs> what time are we on only two o'clock and it looks like it's pitch black outside Anyway, so I want to do the hair. I want to do the hair. What colour do I want the hair? I'm going to try more of like a, a blonde shade almost. So that's too yellow. I've got some green mixed in there, which is lovely. That might be a bit too yellow. Add a bit more. I want it quite watered down as well this what about this shade I'm just pre uh, mixing the colour first, that should do add a little bit more water and then this might be a mistake <laughs> I'll try it with this area because I, I don't want to lift up any of the colour that I've already done as best as I can anyway and just avoid some areas We'll work in each area first. Move on to a smaller brush. Pick up some of that colour. So light wash of this. And then in certain areas while it's still wet let's see how that dries I'm not sure what will happen just so it's not one single tone let's try a bit of that one as well actually Do the same thing with the other side. Let's pre wet this. This is what I'm nervous about this flower. This is my favourite flower as well. I should have done this step with the background. Now and all for next time. I don't know if all that was meant to be her as well or background. But it's all going to be her now. A bit more this colour first. Yeah, because I think that's meant to be background as well. It is what it is now. It's fine, considering that this is my first one and I've just gone onto this skin. There we go. I'm properly doing on watercolour. I'm giving myself a bit of a break. And just, you know, it's not going to be perfect. And I fully intend on practising doing colouring this way. Because I cannot tell you how much I enjoy it. I'm curious to see what the polychromos will work like over the top. Any pencil, to be honest, any um, any pencil, not just the polychromos. Let's so add some of this darker colour now. Ideally, not on the face. I'm 
I suppose I can do the leaves as well, can't I? While I'm here. So I don't need to mix the colour, I'm just going straight into the pan and using this colour here. So I'll pre wet. I don't mind if some of that brown pops through as well. Don't mind. I think I picked up a little bit too much there. Let's see. So what if, if I just add it to the middle? And then use a clean brush to blend to the edges. I'll do the same thing with this one, so I need to pre-wet it. I've literally got three brushes. <laughs> same thing. And then it was this one. had the window open for that fly and it still decided to stay in here which is delightful let's just see what that dries like first before I mess around too much And this one to blend. Tip, don't use a long cardigan when you're uh, watercolour painting because it just makes your life uh, even harder. Keep reaching over. So I'm going with this small brush knife. Tap the colour on and see what it wants to do. I know that looks very dark now, but it will it will dry a little bit lighter. So I think for the skin, I'm gonna have to be so careful with the skin. I'm gonna see first if I can mix. Uh, some sort of skin tone. I'm really 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 not the best at skin tones but I'll see that's a bit too orange maybe a little bit yellow it's looking a little bit better let's water that down let's add a little bit more Let's just go with this and just see how I get on. So before I do, I want to pre-wet these areas again. Things I want to avoid are the eyes. Not too fussed about the eyebrows. I wish I'd not done them blue now. So let's see if I can move some of this colour around. How oh, perfect. So i raise that a little bit. So there's still a hint of something there. Pick it back up. Yeah, 
Now I know to do this step earlier on. So going with that colour, I really don't know. I think yeah, it's going to be too yellow. This. So let's put this where the highlights would be. The tip of the nose. A little bit on the chin. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of red to that. See what it does. Because I still want this this colour to poke through as well. So a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit more. That might be too red now. Blend that in the middle. All behind here would be a bit darker, I think. Let's try a bit of that shade. Trial and error. No, I don't like that one. Just blend that out. Put, either I put too much down, because now that it's blended out, it doesn't look too bad. But while the colour's still wet, I'm going to add a little bit of this pink. I want that to bleed onto the skin. Just leave a little bit of white as well for a highlight. A little bit of blue. She's meant to be a fur, isn't she? It's not, not meant to be a perfect skin tone. Just keep telling myself that. Right, so in with that, the eyes now. So I'm going to mix my colours uh, and then come back because I want to zoom into the eyes. So hopefully that's a little bit closer. Hopefully. So I want a tiny, teeny, 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 tiny little bit of grey. And I mean a tiny, tiny bit. Oh, why am I doing this to myself? It's still wet. <laughs> Lean here. Just here, and I want to blend that out in a minute with clean water. And then arise, I'm going to play it safe and do pink. Do pink eyes. So, I'm going to pop the colour the top and it's going into the grey which is fabulous why am I doing this to myself why can't I just be patient apparently I can't now it looks like she's a zombie so pull that colour back up might as well use that paint while it's on the brush I want to keep the very centre the white of the paper 
That's the beauty of watercolour brushes, they do pull the colour back up really, really well. And I'll add the pupil and whatnot back as well. So while that's still wet, have I got an even smaller brush than this? I'm just, yes, yes, a size zero. I'm going to add a little bit of that turquoise. It might not go if it does. If it doesn't, then I can always take it off. at the very top at the very bottom and just see how that looks to blend that out now and I will have to let this dry before adding the black because we will have a mess on our hands otherwise. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of shading as well to the ear. So I seem to have not done any with that one. So it's too much. And then a little bit of that pink. Now I don't want to push it too much, we're doing just watercolour because I want to test out pencils as well. Because I was thinking about doing more watercolour on her, but I think I'm better off playing it safe. Just, just for this, you know, it's one time, <laughs> and um, and use some pencil, pop a little bit of that blue in as well, just a tiny, tiny bit. I love this little brush. Brilliant. And then I might as well, is it dry enough? Yeah, I could add the stems now to the flowers while I'm here. So I'll lift it up a bit. And hopefully by the time that I've done this, the eyes should be dry so I can do the uh, the black. Yeah, that should be okay. Too much. like that. If you see any areas that I'm missing, shout at me. That should be okay. But the, the actual petals here, not petals, leaves, have dried quite nicely, so I'll be able to add a little bit of pencil like detailing over the top of them. So I'll bring this down. And then get some of this black. Just want solid black. It is still a little bit wet. I'm not going to worry about the highlight in the eye. Because if I did that, I would be nervous. I couldn't resist doing them lashes then. <laughs> a little bit more of the black. Need a bit more water so that's dry. A 
few underneath as well I think. Whoops a daisy too much. Am I going to be able to lift some of that up? Sort of. So I'll have to leave that to dry and come back to it later on. That portion of the lash there because I'm not happy with that at all. Well I've got a little bit of black out. Oh, the eyebrows, the eyebrows. I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of that black in with the hair color, just a tiny, tiny little bit. over the top as well with that with pencils but I think I'm happy as it is with the and I've got these uh, leaves as well in the background or shall I do them Can you see them shall I, I'll just give them a light wash a light wash with a color then we'll go with the pink again just to keep it because I feel like there's loads of blue even though we've used pink quite a lot it's in smaller areas Just gives me something to work with later on with the pencils. Now I'm hoping to get this video up today. Um, I'm not going to have time to finish um, filming before my daughter gets home from school so uh, I will finish it off this evening I think. Uh, but I'll probably have to do it as a time that's just the pencil work but I'll come back at the end and and show you what I've done otherwise as well I think the video will be way too long but so far I'm really enjoying this page totally different from the first one that I did which is nice That was meant to be part of the leaf, not the hair. See how it's matching up there. I think that's the last of them. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah, so I'll be able to come back later on this evening. Bring you right out. There we go. Yeah, bring you back back later this evening. Actually, now I can take off the uh, masking tape. And I'm laughing because I'm thinking, oh, it's just going to rip my paper, this. Make sure I put these in here to dry. Otherwise, they might dry a bit funner. Considering they're not cheap, you want to look after them. And then my paints can be moved so I don't stick my extra long cardigan <laughs> in it. I might have to get the heat gone. I'm just hoping that this does not rip. 
I think it has gone underneath the tape in some areas, which is not the end of the world. It happens sometimes, doesn't it? Let's take the blue one off first. Hold your breath. Oh, I thought it bud three. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I never. I absolutely adore it. I'm so so pleased. So so pleased. So I will come back later on this evening to finish off this illustration. I'll condense this all into one video so you're not waiting for a part two. But so far, I love it and I'm looking forward to trying it as well on a little better quality watercolour paper. Because that might have been some of the issues like here and I had a, a, that white mark that I have no idea why that's happened. Just there. But I love her. I absolutely love her. I mean, it's nowhere near finished yet. But let me know in the comments, would you like this just just as is? Or would you feel like that it needs the pencil over the top? I do feel like it does need pencil. Uh, so yeah, I will do that later on. So I thought I'd bring you into re real time into the last little bit. I've, I've finished the pencil detailing. Now the watercolours that I'm using now, are they're Renaissance watercolours and these are last year's uh, Advent colours. And I've activated a couple of different shades um, and for white highlights I'm using the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I want a tiny little one now. I don't know if this brush is going to be small enough. I know it looks tiny, but they're uh, hit and miss them things. Hit and miss. I need to get some new ones. So I've activated this pink, this turquoise, this pink, and this. It looks like a see-through colour, but it's got lovely iridescent like qualities to it. So I thought I'd pop them, like maybe on a shoulder as a little highlight, highlight here underneath the brow, that sort of thing, which I'll do that first actually. Get all the colours mixed first, just to help them activate a little bit quicker, the lovely paints these. Now I don't think these ones are available as this palette anymore because like I said it is last year, but I think they are available uh, open stock I do believe. So that should be enough. So I'll do the same and I'll bring you in again. There we go, that should be a little bit better. So for the highlights of a skin, it's a little bit on a shoulder, that's a bit too much. Just a touch on a shoulder. Clean my brush off. Blend that out. 
a little bit on the highest point of a cheek, tip of a nose and then underneath the eyebrow as well I think. Oh I've not got my cloth. There we go. The cloth that this these brushes didn't like, I've just pulled out. If I just lift it up to the camera, see? I just want to blend these out a little bit. You might hear kiddie music in the background, it is uh, the evening now, but look how beautiful that is. And then this lighter colour pink, which I'm not too sure about, but I want to test it anyway. If I don't like it, it can come off. So I just want to add just a few dots here and there with this one. And that's clumped up into one big one. That should do it. And then on the leaves down here, I'll add a few as well here. I might actually use this brush with the bleed proof wire or even the smaller one. Probably this, but just wash it straight away. So in with the dark pink. I'm going to take off the excess. While I'm at it, I'm going to add the pink and just splatter it just in a couple of areas. Same with the clear one as well because it's such a beautiful colour, this one. That's enough. And then the blue, activate that. Let's try the leaves at the top here. And then a few down here as well. Oh, I just realised I wasn't on camera then. <laughs> you can tell it's getting later in the day. And I think that's it. I don't want to overdo it with the uh, glittery stuff. But if I do the highlights now and then I'll bring you out. So this is what this looks like. It's very thick. I'm going to wet my brush load it up, take the excess off in the lid and then try and be very careful and not put my hand in anything that I've already done. Put a little dot there in the line. A little dot line. Some on our lips. And then just here and there for the white highlights. Maybe on the tip of her ear. Uh, where else could we put some? It's a little bit there. And then a chin, maybe. I'm just trying to be very careful and make sure that I wash that off straight away. And I will leave that to dry. And then I will show you the final result because it's lovely and glittery now. Not too much, just a little bit of something. And that is it. It is complete. I absolutely love it and working on the watercolour paper was an absolute pleasure to work on. Now I will link the shop, the Renaissance shop in the description. And like I said, I don't think you'll be able to buy this palette as it is, but if I link the shop, you might be able to catch some of the colours if she still does them. I haven't checked in a long, long time. It's like last year now that I bought these. But how beautiful. It just adds a little bit of uh, something. Now that I know that I've, to, you know, how to do this now, I will do the steps a little bit different. 
I'll do the background and then the majority of the page I'll do on the first coat. Second coat going with a little bit more detail and then the third, like I just fill all this in with paint. I should have probably done that on the first step and then added some um, shadows and stuff with another layer of paint. I didn't do that. You learn, don't you? You learn. But I absolutely love her and she was a pleasure. And I'm really, really impressed with this skin, to be honest. I've managed to pull that off. I don't understand how. <laughs> I don't understand how. But I hope that you enjoyed the video nonetheless. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.